Yeah, he does a great job of taking your confidence away in practice. Uh, I got a live stream later tonight with Pat Shea. If you don't know who Pat Shea is, he makes YouTube videos as well. Awesome guy, I've known Pat for about a year. Plays for UMaine, NCAA D1. Actually, when I committed, I was at Marshfield High, which is the my town, my public school here. Growing up, I played with like a lot of highly skilled players who they grew early and they were committing like very young age, like 15, 14 years old. And my junior year there is when Maine um, came into play and they saw me, Beantown Classic, the Fall Classic. I was playing for the Cape Cod Whalers, U16. That's when they offered me, which I, I chose them because I thought it was really cool that they believed in me when I was still playing public high school hockey. How did you find the adjustment as far as shooting and goalies? Obviously, a swim and he, he won goalie of the year for NCAA, I think last week or the week before. Yeah, he does a great job of taking your confidence away in practice. You know, like, <laughs> you come in and you come, you're pretty confident with your shot over summer. You come back and then you, you like, pull one on him and he just sits there and doesn't move and, like, hits him in the shoulder because he's, like, so... He just knows his angles so well, but he, I feel like he's a higher level. Clearly he was the goalie of the year, but he was a bit higher level than the goalies we were playing against. You have a lot less time to shoot and get the puck off. And the goalies are much, much better, faster, and just way better on their angles. So it can be a lot more difficult. You're an initial draft pick, now making YouTube videos. So from, from one guy making YouTube videos, Talking about, I guess, my hockey journey. You talk about your hockey journey on, on your videos. Like, what was that like? Like that moment when you said, "I I got a vision. I have an idea. I want to be creative. I'm gonna put this out there to the world to see." So I saw other college athletes vlogging. For example, like ad adventure athlete, uh, just destroying Stephen Kinez. Like I see these guys and they're having some success doing it. So I was like. I can do that. So I made a day in the life video, pretty simple day in the life of a division one college athlete. It took me a good like month of like sitting there watching the video every day until I got to the point where I was able to actually put it out there. But I'm, obviously I'm playing college hockey and then you have to worry about everyone's opinion. What is it gonna, who's gonna chirp, who's not gonna, whatever. And like at the end of the day, I just kinda became okay with it. If, if this video goes viral and everyone sees me, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I remember seeing that first video when it popped up. I remember seeing this guy in the corner of my screen with a shirt off in the locker room and I'm thinking, like, what is this? And then I ended up watching it one day and I thought to myself, like, this is really good. This is, you know, this is entertaining. This is interesting. I mentally prepped for that before I did it. And uh, the first year, I only got a couple, but this year I got much more. I guess maybe because I kept going with it and I gained more subscribers or not more people. Far ahead. That was the nuts. <laughs> you don't have time for a seat cut back on this situation. I feel like on ice I do. Like I'm I'm ready. Boom. Okay. Seat cut. Contain, 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 and then lose it. As opposed to if I'm here. This is like there's so much more weight moving around. Play it honestly. Yes. And you slide at me, all I gotta do is this. Yeah. And you're you're here. You're out to lunch. Does that make sense? Yeah. Look at that. It's gonna do a 10 out of 10 now. It, it actually hit me in the nuts. Even better. <laughs> Because we're doing this. If I keep my chin loose, I can still make sense. 
That wasn't the money. Yeah, right, take two, take two. That's on the tape. That's right on the tape there. Happy to report in his spare time since becoming unemployed, he's become a uh, janitor. You ever seen the uh, janitor in the Smells Like Teen Spirit music video? I think you'll be you'll be him. Okay, fair enough. Travis and I have been really trying to focus on getting that chest under control to be able to smother pucks and whatnot. So today we just added an extra element to making that chest save with him not necessarily being in the proper position, but his hands being in good position and tracking that puck very well. So, hey, is that the Zamboni over there? Yeah, Zamboni's working hard. It's a suicide. Really trying to bolster through things. Come on, get back in there. So before I move on here, I just want to have a quick little talk about gear for a sec. So I've had a lot of questions the last couple of videos. Why are we wearing the V9 blocker? I thought you hated Vaughn. Well, I don't hate Vaughn, number one. Number two, the status of my G4 blocker, like look at, like this is how bad the sidewall protection is. And if you look at it, this isn't the stitching coming out. It's actually ripping from the blocker itself. Is that the point where the block isn't even protecting me anymore? Pucks are just going right under and smacking me in the finger. So my G4 blocker has literally zero life left at all. I've gone back to my V9 blocker. I don't mind it. It's actually kind of poppy. I don't really have another blocker for the time being until my, my Lefebvre stuff comes in, which should be very soon. I've always enjoyed the G4 glove. I've never had a problem with it. I've always enjoyed it. It's great. The problem is all the paddings and the plastics in here split, so I can't use it anymore. I just found that I'm not catching pucks as well, even with my replacement all white G4 glove. And since I went back to my V9 glove, which was a couple videos ago, actually probably a couple days ago, I'm catching pucks way better. I love how deep the pocket is. The pocket's great. Skate lace, it's nice and snappy. It's a nice, deep, narrow, skinny single tee. Gone back to my V9 blocker, went back to my V9 glove. The plan is to stay exactly like that for the time being until my Lefebvre stuff comes. I would like to keep the V9 glove. I actually do like this glove. It's the best part of the V9 lineup. I might go back to the V9 pads soon if Lefebvre doesn't open up and finish up my set, which should be done any day if they were to open. But I guess we'll see. So I talked the other day about ordering like a shit ton of cowlings. I had cowling for like a life supply on my barrel just when skates come in. This was 600 bucks by the way. One brand new set of cowlings. Two new sets. Three. We have a used set that I picked up online. A fifth pair of cowlings. Some blades because these guys don't have any blades in them. So now I got some blades. Six sets of brand new cowlings. My true skates that I have right now, I've gone to I think five sets of cowlings. So at my math currently, I should be able to get these ultrasonic skates to last me with all of these cowlings right here for the remainder of their lifetime. These are all three millimeter size 11 Bauer Vertex 2 cowlings. That is the preference that I have for my cowlings. The only reason I'm still using the cowlings is that I found the two piece skates are so high up that they hurt my knees, they hurt my, my hips, and I just find a lot of stress going through my lower body. Sticking with the cowling, as I found, has allowed me to stay a lot lower to the ice. It's a lot more of a neutral position. I find the cowling has me staying about like this versus the two pieces or the cowling skates sit more like this. The weight is more on the toes. When you shave out this part, I think you get just as low to the ice, if not lower, than a two-piece skate. I'm gonna keep using cowlings for as long as I possibly can. I'm talking about a lot lately about the Insta361R. This is a, oh shit. I think I ordered the wrong microphone. You know, I've been talking a lot about the... What? Can you mind? Thank you. I've been talking a lot about the Insta361R. I thought that I was ordering a microphone for the camera. Uh, it turns out it's this camera, so I'll throw that on right now and see if that makes a difference in the video. Check out, check out, check out, check out, check out. Random microphone. Two more packages, both are non-hockey related. Uh, picked up some new CDs the other day, brand new Limp Bizkit, and some brand new Creed. It's a pandemic time. There's nothing really entertaining going on. That will conclude mail time. Hope you enjoyed.